the words that we just sang from the psalmist in Psalm 44. The psalmist is speaking about being persecuted uh, by his enemies, those, those who taunt him and who sneer at him and who seek revenge. He, after all, is uh, somebody who is serving the Lord and is righteous. And so he cries out to the Lord God in verse 8, O Lord, wake up. Why are you sleeping? Come to our help, uh, your promise uh, keeping. So he cries out to the Lord that the Lord might remember his promise and uh, to also watch out for his, his people also in the midst of their persecution, in the midst of their uh, afflictions. And that sort of, and that does fit in also with the words of the Beatitude that we'll look at this afternoon in Matthew uh, chapter 5, uh, where the Lord Jesus says in verse 10, which is the last of the Beatitudes, he says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of uh, heaven. Congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, blessed. Blessed can also sometimes be translated as happy. Blessed or happy are those who are persecuted. We just sang the words, Psalm 44. You know, the psalmist was not too happy with the persecution and with the affliction that he was going through. He was crying out to the Lord in the midst of those hardships. And yet the Lord Jesus says to us here in this beatitude, he says, blessed, happy are those who are persecuted. Seems to be a rather strange thought because persecution means that you're going through hardships. They can be economic hardships when people take away your money or, or the things or your material possessions because of because of who you are, because of what you believe. Hardships can be problems that people cause for you because of your faith. Persecution can be a result of ridicule, or it can be a matter of being rejected by other people, by society. Persecution can mean that you're being fined uh, by the government, or you're being put in prison. And in extreme cases, that you might even be put to death. And so when you think what persecution really is, uh, then we ask the question, how can any of this be blessed? How can any of that truly uh, make us uh, happy? Because those are not the things that we would associate with happy and jo happiness and joy and, and blessing. Well, notice the Lord Jesus doesn't just uh, say, blessed are those who are being persecuted, but he says, blessed are those who are being persecuted because of, because of, righteousness. And when he speaks about righteousness, he says they're being persecuted because they are doing what is right and what is just. And so people are persecuting them, they are afflicting them, they're making their life hard because they don't like what they're doing, because what they're doing is right and is just. And when Jesus speaks here about righteousness, he's, he's not just saying, speaking about doing good things and doing nice things for other people. After all, there are many people in this world who are, are not believers, who are unbelievers, who also do nice things for other people, and they feel good about doing these good and nice things for uh, other people. But when Jesus talks about righteousness, he's talking here about doing the very work that God requires of us. Righteousness is doing those things that should be done out of faith, out of faith for the sake of Christ, out of faith for the sake of the Lord our God. So in other words, we are doing the things that God wants us to do. We're doing what God says is just. And when we do those things that are right and just, we're being persecuted then for those very uh, things. Well, Jesus himself speaks... Uh, about being persecuted, and because he's persecuted, he also says those who follow him will be persecuted as well. We read that together in, in John chapter 15, verse, verse 20, where Jesus says, Remember the words I spoke to you, to his disciples. He says, No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. So Jesus makes clear that our persecution is a result of the fact that he was also persecuted because he was persecuted, therefore we can expect to be persecuted for his namesake. But the question that 
that we need to reflect on for a moment here is, so why was the Lord Jesus persecuted? Why did the Jews, why did the leaders of Israel, why did the leaders of the Old Testament church, why did they persecute the Lord Jesus if Jesus is, is righteous? Well, obviously, they did not persecute him because Jesus was evil or because Jesus was wicked. No, uh, Jesus was not evil. He did not do any wickedness. There was no sin at all uh, within him. So from that perspective, there was no reason for them to persecute the Lord Jesus. So why did they persecute him? Well, they persecuted him because he was righteous. And they could not stand his righteousness. For the Lord Jesus came to this world to do what? He came to teach the will of his Father in heaven. And teaching the will of his Father, he taught also the Jews, and he taught God's people there that they should obey the will of their Father. And the will of the Father was that they should also serve the Lord Jesus, as their Lord and as their Savior. But although the Lord, the, the Lord Jesus came in righteousness and he proclaimed what was good and what was just and what is right, and yet the people of Israel, they refused to obey God and refused to obey his will because they did not like his will. They rejected his, his will. They rejected what was good and what was right. And yet in, in spite of being persecuted, remember that he was persecuted throughout his whole life, Right, they hounded him already from the beginning of his ministry. Constantly they came and they, they ridiculed his teachings. Constantly the, the Jews were threatening him. Finally, they put him on trial and they, they killed him. And they showed their great lack of respect for him when they even nailed him onto the cross. And why on the cross? Because the cross was cursed by God. And they wanted to show all the people of Israel how heinous this man really was, how corrupt, how wicked, how evil this Jesus is. See, he is nailed on the cross. He is cursed by God. The Lord Jesus, the righteous one, is being persecuted and being rejected and being killed for the sake of righteousness. And yet in spite of that persecution, the Lord Jesus yet considered himself to be blessed. And that's why, beloved, our Lord Jesus never became bitter. You never hear any bitter words spoken by the Lord Jesus. Well, sometimes he, he became angry with the Jews. Why? Because, uh, because they opposed the will of his Father. But the Lord Jesus himself never became bitter because of uh, the suffering that he had endured in his lifetime. In fact, he, he rejoiced. He rejoiced that he could suffer because that's the very reason that he came to this world, that he might, through suffering, he might pay for all of our sins. It is through his suffering that he was doing the will of his Father in, in heaven. He suffered, indeed, for righteousness' sake. And that's something that we're reminded of also again this afternoon as we celebrate the supper of our Lord. As the Lord gives to us the bread and he gives us the wine, uh, those are symbols of his body and his blood. The bread, the bread reminds us that his body was broken on the cross. The wine reminds us that his blood was shed on the cross, that he gave his life in order to pay for all of uh, our sins. And so we know that Christ was persecuted. He was put to death. But ultimately that his sacrifice also has great meaning and purpose, uh, that it is a result, uh, that, that, that it results for us, that we have the forgiveness of our sins, that we have the life everlasting. And so when we celebrate the Supper of our Lord, we, rem we are reminded of that great sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ gave. And that's why you can say that the Lord Jesus, in the midst of his persecution, you can say that he indeed, he felt blessed. Why? Because he knew that through his suffering, through his death, uh, he would give the greatest blessing possible uh, to his people. The great blessing that he gives us, beloved, is that he redeems us, he saves us from all of our sins, and he gives to us the hope of eternal life. And so, if today we are being persecuted for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, if people today in our society ridicule us, if they hound us, if they kind of shake their heads of, at us and say, how is it possible that you could possibly believe in this? Then you can also expect, beloved, that we will be blessed by the Lord. Persecution, ridicule is not something that we need to run away from, that we need to be shy away from. 
It's something that reconfirms for us that, that we are indeed disciples of the Lord Jesus. For as our Lord was persecuted, you can expect that others, that we will also be persecuted for his namesake. And that therefore, as Christ felt that he was blessed, we too may feel that we're being blessed as we face the persecutions and the afflictions for uh, our uh, faith. But keep in mind that our greatest joy, beloved, our greatest happiness is not found in having all kinds of money. Right? The people of this world, they, uh, they really scoff at uh, God's people because they think really that if you want to have joy and happiness in this life, uh, then you need to have money. You need to have lots of riches. You need to have good health. You need to be popular. You need to have material security. You need to be able to follow the dreams that you have and be able to accomplish those dreams as, as well. And if you can't do those things, if you don't have those things, well, poor you. Because you deserve those things. Those are the things that you need, they would say, in order to enjoy true happiness. But our Lord makes very clear that our happiness is not based on all those earthly things, that we have all those things in our lives. No, the Lord makes clear that our greatest joy and happiness is when we are able to suffer, not suffer for ourselves, but we are able to suffer for the sake of our Lord and when we follow Him. Our greatest joy and happiness comes when, when we are able to sacrifice our life and sacrifice those the things in our life for the sake of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because we know him to be the living Lord. We know him to be our Savior who has come and who has redeemed us. And so we must also realize, beloved, that in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must also suffer many things. Think of what we read in Acts chapter 14. Uh, there the apostle Paul is, is preaching the gospel. And in chapter 14, verse 22, uh, there Luke writes, he says that they, that is Paul and the others, they returned to Lystra, Iconian, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraged them to remain true to the faith. And they said, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Well, immediately before this, in verse 19, they were told that there were Jews who came from Antioch and Iconian, and they won the crowd over, and they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, out of the city thinking that he was dead. There, Paul was being stoned on account of the gospel that he was proclaiming. And shortly after that, the, the Lord also preserved him from that. He was able to stand up, and he was able to continue on. In the next place, uh, they encouraged all the saints, and they said, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of of God. That means, beloved, that for Paul, and Paul now also says, and Luke, for all believers, suffering for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ is indeed being blessed and being happy. Why? Because it is the path that leads to eternal life for the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the use of having all the praise of people everywhere because of our achievements, because of our riches, because of the things people like about us if you do not have Christ Jesus and if you do not have the gospel of salvation? Beloved, the only way to eternal life is through faithful obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ says that you faithfully obey me, you faithfully follow me. That will involve sacrifice on your part. It will also involve that you will suffer and pers persecution. In fact, Jesus then in this, this um, beatitude says, for theirs, those who suffer persecution for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Beloved, also this afternoon as we celebrate the supper of our Lord together, as we sit at this table, this table is also intended by our Lord to be a reminder of the kingdom of heaven uh, to, which we are, to which we aspire. It's a foretaste of that day when we will sit together with all of God's people in the glorious kingdom when the Lord Jesus will again uh, return on that last uh, day. And therefore, also this afternoon when we come to the table of our Lord as his people, no matter what your situation might be, beloved, perhaps we're suffering for the sake uh, of the gospel. 
We think of people in different parts of the world who made a commitment to Christ and who, who are suffering and whose lives are in danger. But we can also think those who, who may be feeling afflicted. If you come to the table, maybe feeling that you're overwhelmed, maybe you're suffering, maybe you're dealing with some hardships in your life that you don't know maybe how to deal with, maybe you're dealing with pain, maybe you're dealing with health issues that cause hardships, perhaps you're dealing with disappointments in your, in your life. And whatever it is that we might be struggling with, we might be dealing with as we come to the table of our Lord, beloved, here at the table of the Lord, here you may feel at peace. Here you may also feel at rest. Because the Lord Jesus, as he gives us the bread, he gives us the wine. He reminds us, he says that your life is secure in my blood. I have paid for you. I have given my life for, for your sins. Therefore continue, to be, therefore, continue to walk in my ways, and, and I will bless you all the days of your life. And one day you will enter into my kingdom into the kingdom of heaven. Amen.